Hey y'all, I was going to try to film. I don't know why I'm showing you this, but I want to. I was gonna try to film with my um, pegboard in the background, but I don't have the shelves up and I just cut some um, things to make to hold the shelves up. <laughs> some little uh, dowels, I cut them down to size so I could put the shelves up anyway. I just wanted to show you how I cut the dowels down to size. They're not even even, y'all. <laughs> anyway it's not what this video is about this video is about dupes I love to dupe and um, I like getting inspo from Kirkland's or Hobby Lobby or Anthropology or Pottery Barn something like that I like getting inspo from there and then trying to recreate that look for less so that's what this video is about it's also part of a playlist but I'll tell you more about that later and I think that's it so let's get into the video on this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. As with a lot of my projects, most of my supplies came from Dollar Tree. And um, yeah, let's just get right into it. This particular project is an anthropology inspired dupe, if you will. It's a tray that they have and you know their trays a little bit pricey, but they are super cute. Here's a close-up and yeah, there's going to be some differences, but I'll explain that in just a minute. But I also printed off a hexagon grid so that I would know which tiles to paint which colors. And then I found this inspo piece and these are tile mats and you can switch out what it says. You can put like different things on there. Anyway, I'm going with this. This is the inspo piece. I mean, the anthropology one was the inspo piece, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing that one kind of like that top. So I tried to measure out, y'all know I'm not really good at measuring. So I tried to measure out, I bought these hexagon tiles off of Amazon and I'll link them below, but they are the 200 piece, 10 millimeter beach wooden hexagon pieces. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm measuring it out to try to figure out how many I'm gonna need because, uh, oh, so here's where I'm painting them. So I put the masking tape upside down and I put two, you know, pieces of tape on the end to hold it down to the mat. And this is just so I can paint the tiles a lot easier. Oh, I'm showing you the tiles that I bought. So now I'm putting all the tiles down onto the pieces of masking tape, because like I said, this is gonna help you paint it easier without having to hold each piece. Now what I will say is, oh, I'm having help there, as you can see, Captain, but I'm painting each tile. And in hindsight, it might have been easier or better to use a paint pen because while I was not trying to put a whole glob of paint down, some, some of the paint was, I had a little extra paint. It was kind of dripping over the side. And later on, it kind of messes me up just a little bit and I ended up having to sand the sides. So I painted them all white, but Here's me, I've you know, made a little grid of the tiles that I'm gonna need, counting out the tiles that I need to make sure I paint the ones black that need to be painted black. But first, I have this little tray, it's from Dollar Tree, and I'm painting the inside. I was looking for one of the trays that looks like a tray tray instead of a, I don't know where the sides kind of go up or out a little bit, but this is all I could find. This was in my stash, so that's what we're using. And I've just painted the whole thing white. And then I go back while that's drying, I go back and I paint the beads, the beads that I needed <laughs> black because those are going to spell out the work. Again, back to don't overdo the paint. I, I actually recommend using a paint pen because that's what I would do next time because the paint kind of globbed on the side and then it didn't make that side smooth. And then I had to sand down a little bit so that it would fit in for the next part. Well, actually this next part. <laughs> Um, I'm painting the top rim black and I go back later with a gold paint pen. I don't know if I showed it or not, but I go back in with a gold paint pen because I was just trying to go for like a layered look. I don't know. I was trying to be fancy with it, but I'm putting down to some aliens craft glue and I'm putting down the first row of tiles. Now what I should have done was start from the center and go out but that's not what I did. And also these hexagon little wood pieces don't fit exactly into the little tray, the bottom of the tray. So that was another challenge. And like in hindsight, I probably should have 
just use a flat piece of wood and lay down the hexagon pieces and then built like the tray around it like you know put the sides on or something like did that myself but that's not what I did. I tried to use this tray so and you know it is what it is I'm learning I'm learning so for this next part I'm finishing up but I don't know if I show you this guys or not but it doesn't go all the way to the end and it's not square so I don't know if I didn't put the tiles down like the way I should have or what but it doesn't go all the way to the end so our idea to solve that and I say our idea because Marvin's helping me with this part is to cut the little box or you know tray box thing down to size this is not the best idea we've ever had I'm just telling you because the wood was splintering it's thin wood it's not you know it's just yeah the struggle was real. I ended up having to sand down the sides a bunch to, to get it to all go back together so we could put that end piece back on. But we did that and now I have put down some resin on here. I didn't have the directions. I didn't look up the directions. I just went by memory and my memory's not that great. <laughs> Apparently because I don't think you're supposed to use the heat gun. I don't know. It, this turns out okay but I'll show you uh, the end result in just a second. So aside from the L and the A being kind of spread apart and there being like too much blank space there, it, lo it looks like it says whole, uh, you know, instead of Ola. Anyway, you can see there's bubbles in here. I didn't get all the bubbles out. The, I didn't split the uh, little pieces in half so I could fill in the gaps around the edge. Yeah, just not, I mean, you know, I mean, it looks okay. It looks okay. And again, here's how the finished piece turned out just my little staged photo if you will the resin has bubbles the <laughs> the tiles don't go all the way to the edge and I didn't fill that in but overall for my first attempt at this kind of project I actually like how it turned out and I want to try it again but be a little bit more intentional you know and thoughtful about how I do it and what size I do it and all that kind of stuff I actually want to do a bigger tray I think that would be fun like for your patio or something like that to have one that says cheers or something like that let me know what you think in the comments below. For DIY number two, this is a Whiskey and Wit inspired project and literally copying Whiskey and Wit. And I have her video where she did this in the description box below. But basically I found a cartoon of Bluey. And again, I'm using the same one that she used, but I printed it out and I did it on the iron on vinyl setting so that that helps you with your, you know, detailed weeding and I just weeded it and then I used my paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl. I took this little night light from Dollar Tree and I just transferred that little bluey onto the night light. And this is how it looks now. It doesn't really like, I thought it was gonna kind of maybe like show bluey better but it doesn't really like you can't really see that it's bluey i mean you kind of know if you know the shape of bluey but you can't really see and this is how it looks in the daytime which is fun you know i mean i guess the point of a nightlight isn't necessarily to see you know a character or something but i think it turned out cute i think it looks cute and it and it's effective as a nightlight so you know it is what it is but let me know if you have anybody in your life that likes bluey and would want something like this. It was actually pretty easy to do and very inexpensive. I mentioned earlier that this video is part of a playlist. It's called the First Friday Playlist. It's one that I host with my friend, Sarah from GGB DIY, and this month's co-host is Tammy from Happiness Created. Um, I've really been getting to know her lately and she is just a true gem. So the link to their channels as well as to the playlist is gonna be below. I really hope you check out all of that because um, it's, it's stuff you won't wanna miss. They're doing dupes too. Okay, back to the video. DIY number three, the inspo came from Kirkland's and it's just this like little hanging canvas art thing. I did the, you know, iron on bottom. I'm just showing y'all, look how hard I am pulling and everything is, it's so much easier to weed iron on vinyl because it just like it stays stuck so I had to go back and you know weed out the little inside of the letters and stuff like that but it's very very easy to weed iron on vinyl and then I had these paint sticks I probably got them from either Lowe's or something <laughs> yeah probably Lowe's 
and I am just staining them with Waverly Wax in the color Antique, all sides, all around. Here we go. And I did cut them down to just right before where the paint stick kind of notches in. And then it's just a matter of, oh, so I ironed on, I guess I didn't show this, but I ironed the iron on <laughs> onto a um, drop cloth that I got from Walmart. And I, I've had it for a while and I still have a ton left of it. And so I am just hot gluing on the back there and then a hot glue on the front of it. And yeah, I have it hanging on this ladder that I made and um, I need to add more decor to it because it's very plain looking right now. So I've been kind of looking at Pinterest and Google and stuff like that just to see different ideas of what to put on my blanket ladder. But that's where it's hanging right now and I think it turned out really cute. This next piece is inspired by a blog that I saw and I don't know, I think she sells or maybe she lets you download this kind of um, image thing. Oh, I have Captain's help again. But I just kind of recreated and I used different fonts, I used different graphics, you know, things like that. Kind of made it my own. I put a Cricut um, in there and hers didn't have a Cricut. And I put a little coffee cup for hot chocolate. So I kind of made it my own, but I wanted a sign to put in my craft room and I thought that this one looked cute. And then again, I'm using my favorite Expressions Vinyl Paper Transfer Tape. I just love this stuff. Although the the, the piece that I'm putting this on, I did not paint, so I'd really, I could have just used whatever transfer tape, regular transfer tape. But this is what I have on hand, and this is my favorite to use, so that's what I'm using. Once I got it transferred on, and you gotta be a little bit careful because some of the smaller pieces, you know, didn't wanna come up as easily. I found the center and tried to center it best I could and pulled off the paper transfer tape, put the H back on that fell off <laughs> and here's how it looks. I'm going to hang it on the pegboard behind me where I sit when I craft and, and do my work. I don't have it all the way organized and like I like it yet so right now this is how it looks. I think it turned out super cute. I wanted to tell y'all I also host, okay. I, my cat was just scratching in a cat box. Anyways, I host a crafting group on Facebook. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I host it with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY, the same one that I'm hosting with the, today's playlist with. But anyways, um, it's on Facebook. It's free to join. We'd love it if you join um, and uh, yeah, share a project that you're working on. So um, link will be below. You know, Captain gets a lot of video time, but <laughs> here's socks hiding on the couch. Here's the last DIY for today, and it is another Kirkland's Home Inspo. This is a pillow, and it's, you know, probably a, I don't even know what size this is, I can't read it. But anyway, it's a square pillow, but that's not what I'm making. I'm making a little lumbar pillow. And I used my iron-on vinyl, and I just recently changed this. If you saw, go watch my craft room tour, I've moved some stuff around, and I brought this little shelf thing into my office, and I put my Cricut on there, I put my printer on there, it all fits really great. And I'm getting another one for my, the inside of my craft room closet. So I'm using my Cricut heat press to transfer this iron on vinyl onto the um, drop cloth. I'm using the drop cloth again for this one. And you know, I mean, I'm putting it on for the time that it said or whatever. I made sure I went over it multiple times. I let it cool all the way down. And you know, it looks great so far, like it that looks fine. But when I start to pull it up, yeah, it's not so much. It kind of started some of the the letters aren't sticking down as much. Um, you see, I had to just pull off something over there. And now what I'm trying to do is measure it so that it's kind of centered when I make the pillow, and I'm trying to cut it down to size so that the pillow, the words on the pillow are kind of centered on the pillow. And I'm using that liquid stitch. I got mine from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going around to make the seam. And what you wanna do, I'm leaving a little gap so I can stuff it later, but you're wanting to glue or, you know, liquid stitch the right sides together. Although there's really not a right side on the back, but anyway. So then once it's dry, I let mine dry overnight. I turned it inside out and then I just used 
an old pillow. I just tore it open, <laughs> used that stuffing, and I stuffed it all the way in. And then I'm going to take some uh, liquid stitch and I'm gonna kind of fold in the top there. It's a little harder to do this because it gets a little messy and, and stuff. But this is how it turns out. And I used some little mini clamp clip things that I got from Dollar Tree to secure it together while it dried. But it turned out great and it looks really cute on the chair in my bedroom. And I, I like how it turned out. So I'm pretty happy with it. Thank y'all so, so much for joining me today as I crafted and created. And um, you know, I, not all of the projects quite worked out, but that's part of crafting. That's part of the evolution of me as a crafter, getting better at what I do and learning new techniques, learning how to create things. So it's always a fun time for me. And I hope you enjoyed it too. And if you did, don't forget, like, subscribe, do all the things and yeah, help my channel grow. Help my channel grow. I hit 4,000, um, but I'd like to hit like, you know, 100,000 <laughs> soon. I'm just a few, few thousand off. But um, if you want to follow me here on uh, YouTube or over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, something like that, my handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. <laughs> Bye.